Look, we all got into some weird random stuff during quarantine. I developed so many hobbies that I started ranking them based on how difficult they were compared to how ultimately rewarding they were. So like at one end is sourdough, way too difficult. Sorry, you got to spend a full 48 hours and 15 pounds of flour on an experiment that will either be almost as good as the shit at Safeway or this is what a bread abortion looks like. A proportion. On the other end, much to my surprise, was houseplants. Like, yes, houseplants do count as a hobby. Houseplants, um, plants are the new pets. Pets are the new babies. Babies are canceled. The houseplant thing surprised me for a few reasons. One, I had always assumed that I had the opposite of a green thumb. In college, I killed a cactus from lack of watering. And after that, I decided that, you know what, maybe plants just aren't for me. But when quarantine rolled around, I decided, you know what, screw it. It's been several decades now. Maybe I've changed. And I guess I have because I got a pothos, which is now this monster that's given birth to several baby pothoses. Like, did you know that you can just cut off a piece of a plant and put it in water and now you have two plants? Free plants. You can't do that to your children. Um, you can't even do that to your new children, formerly known as pets. And so the pothos thrived. So I went back to the nursery, the plant nursery, not the OG baby nursery. And I looked around and I could have picked a plant based on my relative newness in the house plant world or on my resources, like my south facing window. But no, instead I picked based on how cool I thought the plant looked. So behold, my Calathea Macchiana, which I knew nothing about, but apparently I found out later they're extremely annoying to keep alive. But I did manage to keep her alive and happy. And I also learned something really cool. I noticed that she seemed like she was wiggling around a lot, like throughout the course of a day. So I set up a time lapse and I found that her leaves went from horizontal flat during the day to completely straight up at night. Um, and this is a phenomenon called photo nasty. It's probably photonasty, but photo nasty's funnier. Um, you might be aware that many plants will bend and grow toward a light source, which is called uh, phototropism or heliotropism. But uh, photonasty isn't about which way the plant is growing, and it's not directional. It's just evolved to move around as the sun moves in order to most likely conserve water while maximizing sunlight exposure. Cool, right? And creepy. The best kind of cool. There's one main reason that I was able to learn all this about this plant. It's because this plant is sexy. There, I said it. That's a sexy plant. And it turns out that the scientists who study plants are just like me because a brief in the most recent issue of Nature asserts that botanists are more likely to study plants that they find aesthetically pleasing. Sexy. Uh, are there furries for plants, by the way? <laughs> like leafies? Did I just speak them into existence? If so, hello and welcome to my channel, leafy friends. Please like and comment and subscribe. Anyway, it's nice to think of science as this ultra rational process that rises above petty human biases. But for a long while now, scientists and philosophers have known that that's unfortunately not true. One easy way to see that it's not true is to wonder why certain people choose to uh, specialize in certain subjects. Charismatic megafauna like elephants and tigers tend to get more attention, not just from the general public, but from scientists too. Uh, when I was in fifth grade, so around 10 years old, me and all of my friends wanted to be marine biologists. Why? Probably because we grew up watching like the little mermaid and free willy. And so we wanted to study whales and dolphins and mermaids. I don't know. Kids are stupid. Uh, but I did, I had one friend who made it all the way to college with the intent to study marine biology, at which point she got bored learning about plankton and switched over to CSI. And now she solves murders for a living. Quite the swap. But we were just doing what even adults do. We wanted to focus on fun species, the things that interested us. Here's an interesting fact. Uh, in 2018, researchers developed a ranking of the most charismatic megafauna. So congratulations to tigers. Sorry, whales. Maybe work on your conversation skills. 
So while I already knew that charismatic megafauna, you know, big, interesting animals, tend to get more funding and attention and conservation efforts, it was news to me, although obvious in retrospect, that society does the same thing with plants. In fact, uh, previous research has shown that animal conservation already gets an unfair amount of attention compared to plant conservation, maybe because we think that plants just aren't as charismatic as animals. So these researchers recently decided to look at uh, the history of research done on plants in a specific area to find out what kind of plants tend to attract the attention of scientists. What they found surprised them. There was no correlation between the number of papers published and things like rarity or actual scientific interest, like how some plants might be under more pressure to quickly adapt to new environments. That's scientifically interesting, but doesn't result in more papers. What they did find was that sexier plants got more attention. Blue flowers were by far the sexiest, followed by white, red, and then yellow. The baseline was brown and green because they didn't stand out much from the background, which reminds me of when I was in the second grade and Mrs. McKelvey gave us all colored construction paper to make into tulips to hang in the window, and she gave me green. And I was so upset, but Mrs. McKelvey insisted that flowers could be green and she wouldn't give me a different color. Like, okay, but it's obviously the worst color for a flower to be. And have you ever seen a green tulip? I hadn't, but I did just look it up and there is one, but it sucks. So screw you, Mrs. McKelvey. Anyway, the researchers also found that taller flowers got more scientific attention than shorter flowers, which is funny because the same is true of animals, you know, mega fauna. It wasn't all aesthetics. They also found a positive correlation with the number of papers about a species and that species range size, which they suspect is due to that species just being more accessible to scientists, which makes sense. You know, if more people grow up around a plant, they see a plant a lot, they have easy access to be able to study that plant, they're more likely to study that plant even though there's probably more scientific interest to be found in rare plants. So while you might want to think that our scientific understanding of plants, species that are crucial to the survival of humans and every other species on this planet, is based on what's most important or what's most interesting or educational, it's actually based on scientists finding tall blue flowers sexy And so that's why we know more about the gorgeous Gentiana lingustica, loads of papers published, compared to, say, Fritillaria involucrata, an absolutely hideous trash plant that looks like it already died two days ago and has no scientific papers written about it. On a side note, I decided to look up endangered plant species to see if I could identify the least charismatic plant among them. And I think the loser is in in Rubio, which is a native bush in Puerto Rico that is apparently going extinct because it has super sharp thorns that it evolved to prevent grazing animals from wanting to eat it, which also prevents them from spreading its seeds around. Congratulations. You played yourself. Anyway, is this the most important science news happening right now? No, but frankly, I'm sick of talking about COVID and herd immunity and clowns threatening to sue me. So I just wanted to spend some time talking about plants. So please take this information and then go learn something new about an ugly plant. Adopt an ugly plant. I just got this spider plant from a friend who was moving and couldn't take it with her. And frankly, I think it's the least charismatic plant in my collection. But after researching this video, I've decided to give her a little bit more respect given her a name because names increase charisma. Her name is Natasha. Perfect name for a spider plant, I think. But yeah, buck the trend. Learn about an ugly plant.